All right, so now that we've discussed a few kinematics terms, position, velocity, acceleration, and so forth, let's take a look at a few graphs that are used to represent motions and see how these different terms are represented. So as you can see here, we're starting with the position time graph, where we have position as the y-axis and time as the x-axis. For all of these different types of graphs, you need to be able to do two things. Number one, you need to be able to read the graph to understand what's going on. And number two, there are some pieces of information that are included in the graph that you're expected to be able to extract. We'll see what these pieces of information are. So first of all, if we want to read this graph, we can just take note that this is motion at different points in time. And we can see in the position here that this person or object essentially moved in the positive direction from zero to T1, all right? That's what the graph tells us. They moved in the positive direction. From time T1 to T2, the position of the object did not change. So it either did not move or maybe it spun in circles, but its position did not change. From time T2 to T3, we can see our object moved in the negative direction and actually back to the original position that it started with. So that's the first part, being able to read and understand what's going on in these kinematics graph. The next thing is, what is the special information that is in this graph that isn't so obvious? And the piece of information in this graph is actually velocity. So if you recall, velocity is equal to change in position over the change in time. Change in position is equal to final position minus initial position, and change in time is final time minus initial time. If you recall from your early math classes, this is essentially y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is the slope of this graph. So essentially from this graph, we know that velocity is the slope of the position time graph. So knowing this information, that means you should be able to look at a position time graph and be able to extract the velocity at any point during the motion. And with that, we can actually go down here and look at the velocity time graph, where again, velocity is our y-axis, position, sorry, time is our x-axis, and we can draw the velocity time graph from the position time graph. So if we take a look at the position time graph from time zero to T1, our graph had a positive slope, and it was a positive constant slope. So it means our velocity from time zero to T1 should be a constant positive value. And that indeed is the case, right? It's a constant positive value. Then we take a look at time T1 and T2, where we can see our position time graph is a flat horizontal line. There is no slope, meaning that the velocity from time T1 to T2 is zero. And that should actually make a lot of intuitive sense because we know on this graph, our object did not move from time T1 to T2, so its velocity should be zero. Then we can look from time T2 to T3, we can see here that the slope is negative, but it's also a constant value. So that means our velocity time graph should take on a negative constant value from time T2 to T3. So this is essentially what our velocity time graph looks like. Okay. So now that we have our velocity time graph, again, there is information that we can extract from our velocity time graph. So again, there is some information that is in this graph. And the first one that I wanna talk about is displacement. So if you recall, when you're looking at these graphs, that velocity is equal to the change in position over the change in time. If you rearrange this equation, you can get change in position is equal to velocity times the change in time. Right? I'm simply just rearranging this equation to get change in position is equal to velocity times the change in time. So what's special about this is if you look at this graph, velocity is our y-axis, and if we multiply by the change in time, we essentially get the area under the curve. 
And that's actually what's important here, that we can say that displacement is the area under the velocity time graph. So if we were to take a look at this graph, we can see there are a couple of areas where we have area. So certainly from time 0 to t1, we have area. And this area is a positive area because it is above the x-axis. So that means from time 0 to t1, our object had positive displacement. And that makes sense because from time 0 to t1, our object moved in the positive direction. We can see from time t1 to t2, there is no area under our graph, so there should be no displacement, which again makes sense because our position didn't change. Then finally, from time t2 to t3, we also have area, but this time this area is negative because it is below the x-axis. So this means from time t2 to t3, our object had displacement in the negative direction which makes sense because we can see in our position time graph that our object moved in the negative direction. Okay, so that's the next piece of information. There is one last piece of information that we can get from the velocity time graph, and that is, it's pretty similar to what we did over here. You'll recall that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. And similarly, you can write this as the final velocity minus the initial velocity over final time minus the initial time. And again, we can see that this is the slope of the velocity time graph. So again, we're able to say here that acceleration is the slope of the velocity time graph. All right, so knowing this information, that means, of course, we can draw our acceleration time graph from our velocity time graph. Now, in this case, the situation isn't particularly exciting because you can see our velocity time graph is horizontal throughout the graph. So that would mean, in this case, that our acceleration time graph is simply zero throughout the entire graph because there was no acceleration uh, based on the slope of our velocity time graph. Of course, the MCAT is not always going to give you a situation where your acceleration time graph is just a flat line, so we'll want to consider a situation where our acceleration is non-zero. So, in this case, I have another example with three position time graph, velocity time graph, and acceleration time graphs. And now we're going to consider a situation where our acceleration is going to be a constant positive value. And here we're going the opposite direction. Instead of draw, taking your position time graph and drawing the velocity and acceleration time graph from that, we're going to start with our acceleration time graph and draw the velocity and position time graphs from this. So, how do we do this? Well, acceleration, you recall, is equal to the slope of the velocity time graph. So if our acceleration is a constant positive value, then our velocity time graph should be a line whose slope is a constant positive value, which you probably recognize is a linear line with a positive slope. All right? So this matches up, and again, just to emphasize, the slope is equal to the acceleration. So now that we have the velocity time graph, now we can try to draw the position time graph. Here it's the exact same sort of situation. What we know is that velocity is the slope of the position time graph. And since we know that our velocity is a, is a positive value that's increasing constantly, we can figure out what should the position time graph look like. And this one's a little bit more difficult because here our slope is not constant. It starts off being very small but becomes increasingly more positive, a larger value. And you might be familiar with this, but this actually describes a parabola. 
So if you have a graph that looks like this, where again, the slope at any point is your velocity, what you can appreciate is that at the beginning of the graph, it's very horizontal, showing that the slope is close to zero, which matches our graph. And as you move along the graph, it becomes steeper and steeper, showing that your slope is increasing in value, becoming a more positive value, which again represents what we see in our velocity time graph. So this is an example showing you how you can draw velocity time graphs and position time graphs given the acceleration time graph. All right, the last thing I want to mention real quick is some of you might be watching this video and thinking, how can the acceleration be zero if the velocity did change? All right, it's true that technically there was acceleration in order for the velocity to change at T1 and T2, but in this case, the MCAT is not gonna test you on these you know, minor instances where it would seem like the acceleration should be infinity because the change of velocity occurred super quickly. But so in this case, they would just say that your acceleration is the slope, and since the slope is always zero, we get this acceleration time graph.